Hey there, guys. Welcome back. Hey, guys. It's Joel and Danny. Here with Keep On Tolkien, your favorite podcast for Tolkien-related stuff. We're here all uh, fucked up on coffee and tater tot hot dish. and uh, We're here bringing to you our list that we had a lot of fun coming up with, part two of our shafted characters from the original Lord of the Rings movie trilogy. Yeah, the Peter Jackson trilogy, 01 to 03. <laughs> Um, so we're we're just picking back up where we left off, and the last character that we mentioned was good old Tom Bombadil. Good old Tom Bombadil, and that's where we left it. So this next one is a character that's totally in the movie, obviously. Very much in the movie, but more so just... But they got fucked. Like, yeah. They got super, super shafty. Super shafty. I don't think this is much commenting on the actor's job. I think the actor did a good job. Right, with the role that was written with for the him. role that, but I th- I feel like the role just kind of no, it was a screenwriting problem. Yeah, yeah, and the character that we're talking about is wonder if you guess because everybody bitches about it. Frodo, Frodo, son of Drogo, Frodo, son of Drogo, the hero of the Lord of the Rings. One I think. of one of them, one yeah, of them, definitely. I think Sam is the Bilbo Baggins' nephew, Bilbo Baggins' nephew, and appointed heir, and appointed heir. So yeah, everybody knows Frodo, and we don't have to go too much into the backstory of, yeah. <laughs> of Frodo. He's one of the main, main, main characters. But there's a lot of reasons why he was shafted, and let's get into him. Yeah. So in the movie, the way that they made Frodo's character, he was a lot more of just like a whiny little helpless bitch. Little, little bitch. He did. He made a lot of those like sad, shocked faces. Yeah. How many times is Frodo on the ground screaming for help <laughs> in the trilogy? So many times. And let's just look at, so Frodo, always the damsel in distress, right? Right. And let's look at, this is what it says on the outline here. Point I, Frodo ain't no bitch. No, yeah, first <laughs> first point, Frodo ain't no bitch. He's, he's a smart, clever little fucker. So yeah, we talked about it earlier in the, uh, so he's, not only is he smart as hell, so f- first of all, he's attractive as fuck. I mean, they did... Right there with Elijah Wood. He's an attractive man. Yeah, he's supposed to be an attractive yeah. fra- so uh, he's supposed an attractive to be, hobbit. He's supposed to be an attractive hobbit. But he's also smart as fuck. Like, he, he speaks, uh, when he meets the Gildor and the elves, he speaks to them. He greets them in Quenya. Yeah, uh, which is the high elven the speech. High elven Not many people know that. The common yeah. elven tongue is Sindarin. Yeah, the common and elven tongue. And even that isn't spoken all that much around By anymore. hobbits, for yeah. sure, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, it's... It's pretty crazy. And, like, he's smart enough to know when he hears them singing, they're singing, Elbereth Githoniel. And he knows that Elbereth is the uh, the Quenya word for uh, for Varda, who's the queen of the Valar. And he knows that they are high elves because they're singing about the Valar. Yeah. Because Sindar don't really Yeah, they don't really, they don't really, really do that. Yeah. So not only is he smart as fuck, so he, um, so, like, let's go back to, like, Frodo's most vulnerable moment when he's stabbed by the Witch King, right? Mm-hmm. In the movie... He puts the ring on, pretty much, dro- he drops his sword immediately. Yeah, he drops his sword and just kind of, like, falls back. And, and cowers back mm-hmm. uh, to where he's stabbed on the ground. Yeah. But in reality, if you read the book, uh, Frodo draws his sword and yells the name of Elbereth, who we just talked about. Elbereth! And he slashes at the at the cloak of the of the Witch King. The Witch King of Angmar. Mm-hmm. Frodo's slashing at him with his sword. Yeah, afterwards... Uh, I think after he wakes up in Rivendell, and I think Aragorn's recounting some of the incident, he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, we we went up there, we heard scream, and then you appeared on the ground, and, you know, Aragorn did his thing with fire, and they kind of went off, and all that they saw was, like, a cut piece of cloth. Like, yeah, somebody actually of... fought to the bitter end. Yeah, like, he, he hacked a piece of the Witch King's cloak off. Like, uh, it's, it's pretty serious stuff. And he the only reason, so the whole thing about the Morgul Blade is if you're stabbed in the heart with a Morgul Blade you become a wraith, like, instantly. Mm -hmm. So that was what he was trying to do. He was trying to stab Frodo in the heart, right? And uh, the only reason he missed his heart and pierced his left shoulder is because Frodo was struggling so much and screaming the name of Elbereth. He was swinging at him. And swinging at him. Like, uh, in the... At at one scene in the Council of Elrond, Boromir describes the first time that they come in, tact with, uh, come in contact with a ring wraith, and he's like, even their most seasoned warriors were just falling on the ground, cowering and running away. Right, yeah. And here Frodo is straight up just, like, slashing at him. Yeah, by himself, essentially, like, with a tiny little sword. Yeah, they've got, he's a little guy with a little sword. Yeah, which, I mean, it's a cool sword. It's made by the, the men of the north and shit. It's a nice sword. Yeah, this is when he wasn't wielding Sting yet. He was wielding... Uh, uh, yeah, the Blade of Westerness, the, mm. one of the Numenor blades. Yeah, 
So, okay, let's go to Moria, where Frodo, you know, arrives like a little bitch yet again. <laughs> so, in Moria, the troll actually shows up and sticks its, it, it kicks its foot through the, the fucking door, and Frodo takes Sting, and he screams, For the Shire! And stabs it right in the foot, deep, mm-hmm. just real deep, and it wrenches, it nearly wrenches the blade out of his hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, Aragorn says, "Well, he's so funny." He says, "He says, uh, he says the Hobbit's bite is deep. You have a good blade, Frodo, son of Drogo." And it's an epic moment where Frodo, like, he he, he makes the troll fuck off by himself. Yeah, because somebody else had just a, tried to attack the troll and it fucked up their blade. And it like was Boromir. Dinked, it was Boromir, and it yeah. like dinked his blade and it, like he it didn't do anything. the blade. Yeah. And then Frodo comes up and he's like, ah, and stabs right in, and they're all like, whoa, whoa, good job. So yeah, Frodo's brave as shit, and he's showing it in Moria, and he was fighting the 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 goblin that eventually stabbed him when they think he's dead because of the mithril right yeah it was in the movie it was that same big old troll but in mm-hmm. the in the book it was it's uh, like an orc chieftain yeah it was a big it was a real big orc chieftain who was really fast and had a real giant long spear and just mm-hmm. really just railed right into him yeah yeah and uh, so let's talk about all right, so we we did this a little bit out of order, but uh, let's talk about another mo- moment in badassery for Frodo, the uh, the Fords of Bruinen. Oh yeah. So aside from the fact that he fought the Witch King uh, on that scene in Weathertop, mm-hmm. but after getting stabbed, he resisted turning for fourteen fourteen days, fourteen two weeks, two whole weeks. He got stabbed in the chest, and not only did he bear a stab wound in the chest without being treated for fourteen. For two weeks, but he resisted turning to the wraiths. Right, and like at the at that point, so he's been stabbed fourteen days ago. He rides in the book. He rides himself across the fords of Bruinen. Yeah, yeah. He gets carried there to the ford by is it Gildor um, or Glorfindel? No, he gets well. Glorfindel meets him at the at the ford. Okay. Yeah, but Frodo li- rides himself to like because they because the like, Aragorn and them are like we're gonna try to distract or something, and they're right, like right. you ride ahead, and so Frodo rides ahead, and he actually turns around and draws his sword. Yeah, and he's like, "Bring it, motherfucker!" It's like essentially like I guess this is my only option here. Yeah. So he draws his sword, holds it up in the air, and as they are coming to cross the river, that's when Gandalf and Elrond do their their little and and Glorfindel do, do their, their magic yeah. bit with the ford. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in the movie it's Arwen who holds up her sword. It's she Arwen. Like, if you want him, come and claim him. <laughs> yeah, no, man, that was that was Frodo's <laughs> badass moment. He's supposed yeah. to ride across the fucking ford by himself. Yeah, that's pull all out f- his sword. That's all Frodo and Glorfindel there. That's that that part is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And like the the Witch King is like scared of Glorfindel. We'll talk more about Glorfindel later. He's on the list too. So yeah, we um also another thing that I got sh- that that has to do with Frodo that got shafted is the the friendship between Frodo and Sam. Mm-hmm. They totally made up that weird little storyline where Ga- where um Gollum like throws away the Lambus bread and like he, he took it. You know, he's, he's he's like no Sam, you go home. Go home, Sam. He's like, what the, what the fuck what the like, fuck is this? Yeah. Almost in Mordor and he's just like go home. What? Yeah, no, no, it, it's a weird part of the the movie, in my opinion. But uh, they did it to build drama for the the Shelob fight, so I understand. But at the same time, like it, it Frodo wasn't that weak. Frodo wasn't that weak, and the friendship of Frodo and Sam wasn't was, that, way was way stronger. Way stronger. Way stronger than that. Way stronger. Than that. Like they, would, they wouldn't they let ever... a lie of golems come in between their friendship. Yeah. No. 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 So yeah, that's that's Frodo, and a lot of I think a lot of you will agree. Um, hit us up if you don't agree. If you think Frodo in the movie is super bad, badass or something, uh, let us know. Um, <laughs> I love how you're like inviting somebody to say something that you're, going, yeah. you're already laughing. Yeah, go ahead. Please do. If, please by any by all means. Please argue with us. <laughs> so. All right, we're gonna get to another. Uh, this is this is these aren't a character, but they're a group of characters essentially. Um, we're gonna talk about the Barrow Wraiths. Yeah, because this was a big scene in the Fellowship as they're leaving the Shire and such mm-hmm. after they left Tom Bombadil. This is where the excerpt came from. In the this beginning. is where the excerpt came from. They oh. one of their f- real big perils that they run into where they almost die right off the bat is the Barrow Wraiths. Yeah, and this is essentially where so the Barrow Wraiths like kidnap them. 
and they're about to kill him. And they dress him up in like these weird like ceremonial armor and shit like that. And jewelry. And jewelry. And all sorts of weird yeah. shit. And they take their clothes. That's the thing. So Tom Bombadil rescues them from these uh from these barrel wraiths. And their clothes are gone. So they have to just wear the shit that they found in the barrel. And that's where they get their swords, which is very important. So the thing about uh barrel wraith is that they're essentially angry ghosts of uh men of the North Kingdom, most mm. likely the men of Rudauer, who were um Corrupted by the Witch King. Right, because the Barrow Downs, the location where they were, there were multiple locations of Downs around. Right, yeah. And the location that they were at was really near one of the, wasn't it one of the Northern Kingdom, like, cities or something like that? Yeah, um, it was part of, so the Barrow Downs, I think they had, I think that was essentially where they were, uh, their tombs. Okay. We're placed, but it's it's near. Uh, I don't. Know, is it near Fornost? I don't remember. I think it. I think it was somewhere near Fornost. Is it we'd near have Fornost? To, we'd have to look at a map. Yeah, we'd have to look at a map. But it's near one of the the cities of the Old North Kingdom. So the Barrow Downs have some kind of hidden history with the Old Northern Kingdom, mm-hmm. which we talked about in the last episode. Is just kind of shafted in general. The Northern Kingdom. Yeah, the Kingdom of Arnor, mm-hmm. the sister kingdom of Gondor. Yeah. So yeah, barrel wraiths as well, shafted, completely shafted. Yeah, utterly shafted, <laughs> utterly shafted. All right, what do we got next up here on the list? Of we're this is a this is a fun one. This is a fun one, yeah. This is what I like this character. Quick beam, quick beam. I think this was another one of the suggested characters. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, somebody also suggested this to me. Uh, quick beam is the hasty ent from the two towers. The hasty end. Because <laughs> <laughs> at one point, after uh, Mary and Pepin take up with Treebeard, uh, Treebeard goes to a meeting with some of the other Ents, and he just kind of sends Mary and Pepin off with an Ent that he feels is a little more suited for them to kill mm-hmm. time with. Then he chooses Quick Beam because of the Ents. Also because Quick, Quick Beam is the hastiest. The, he says in the book, too, that Quick Beam, the reason he doesn't need to be at the Ent moot is because, like, Quickbeam, the hasty one, he's already made up his mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he wants yeah. to attack the orcs. He's like, I don't need to talk. Like, I already made up my mind. You know my vote. I'm going to go hang out with these hobbits. That's such a fun That's a, such a fun day when we get to <laughs> see uh, Mary and Pepin hanging out with Quickbeam. Yeah, it's fun in the book, man. They're just singing, just singing, uh, or um, just drinking ant water, getting real big. That's the thing. Mary and Pepin get really big because of all that ant water. Yeah, fun fact about his name. He got the name Quick Beam um, from replying to one of the older Ents' questions before the Ent was finished speaking first. <laughs> and Ents speak extremely slow. Yeah. It takes a long time to say anything in Old Entish. And we don't say anything unless it's worth taking a long time to say. <laughs> but Quick Beam was too hasty. Too hasty for that shit. And uh, I think one of the I think one of the ants we see is supposed to be Quickbeam in uh, but he's never mentioned by name. Mm-hmm. Another one that we suspect may have been shown briefly is like yeah, a like, minor oh, character. Look over there, it's Quickbeam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Quickbeam shafted, shafted. Oh, this next ones they got super shafted. Yeah, the next ones they were actually relatively big in terms of like the the storyline. Yeah, the sons of Elrond. Of course, we're talking about Elodan and Elro here, who are the twin sons of Elrond. Also really good friends of Aragorn. Yeah, they rolled deep with Aragorn. Yeah, they kind of grew up together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually just read the part uh, in the appendix where Aragorn meets Arwen, and he says that to her. He's like, it's really weird. I know your brothers for a long time. I've never heard of you. They never even said anything about you. Yeah, so it's kind of a... he was. Yeah, he was already good friends with her brothers. <laughs> One thing... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about this. Something we should have thrown on this list of shafted characters is just a general category. Hmm. Female characters. Oh yeah, but we Shaft. got that. We got the episode coming up, guys. Oh yeah, I suppose Super. that's that's more of an overall Tolkien thing mm-hmm. that we are actually going to address in a yeah. future episode. It's not so much one of the movie adaptations cutting something out because there wasn't much to work with in the first place. Right, most to work with in the <laughs> first they, place. If anything, they added more of the female character stuff with like Arwen and stuff. Oh, they definitely added to, more. Yeah. Just to have more of a female presence, which you can't blame them for. No, no. It was quite a sausage fest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so about sausages, the sons of Elrond. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Speaking of twin sausages. <laughs> so another real fun thing that they do is when, uh, I think it's more in the Return of the King when Aragorn musters together the rangers, the Dúnedain rangers to come yeah. help. The sons of Elrond are with them there because they are also friends with the rangers. Yeah, and these rangers actually take the pass of the dead with uh, rangers and excuse me, rangers and the sons of Elrond, Eladan and Elrond here. Yeah, they ride deep. Yeah, when Elrond, when Aragorn and the rangers go on the path of the dead, sons of Elrond are there too. Mm-hmm. They're like, we're not leaving you guys hanging. There's a really totally cool, coming along. Uh, it's pretty cool in the game, the War in the North. You get to hang out with Eladan and Elrond here. If you oh, times. really? That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Big fighters in the Battle of Pelennor yeah, Fields. Big, big time in the Battle of Pelennor Fields. And uh, they're also uh, present for the coronation of uh, Elrond. Or not Elrond. <laughs> coronation of Aragorn, excuse me. To King Elisar. Yeah. Elisar. Took me a second. Yeah. Yeah. When, um, so they're there. Um, they're, they're not there in the movie. Unless two of those random elves are supposed to be Elodon and Elrond right. here. Like they're claiming all these other fucking characters are just, oh, that person in the background, that was them. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's bullshit. Just cut them out. If you're going to cut them out, just cut them out. Yeah, don't don't give us this. Don't give us this cockamamie excuse that, oh, that that's Elodon and Elrond here over there. No, <laughs> just cut them out. Yeah, so they're, in, they're entirely cut out. And uh, it, it, Arwen is portrayed as the only child of Elrond. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. But that also brings us to our next character, Elrond himself. Elrond. So this is another one of those characters that's totally in the movie, but they were done uh, wrong. Yeah, they. Yeah. Once again, the actor did a great job with right. what they were supposed to do. Hugo Weaving is a great actor. Yeah, love him to death. Yeah, love Hugo Weaving, but in my opinion, he's a huge miscast for one reason, one general reason, is that he's way too fucking old looking, man. Yeah, he kept. He has a pretty good fair look to him. Yeah, you know he's, he's. But he's yeah. still pretty. He's still. He's got a receding older. hairline. I mm-hmm. mean. <laughs> <laughs> he's also Elrond is a much happier character. Much happier dude. Yeah, he's I, he's a very serious actor in a lot of the roles yeah. that he does. Yeah, he's very stern. That was the word I, I stern. used. I thought of. Yeah, yeah, very stern. And Elrond is like this dude, like. He's, you know, they, they kind of describe him as, like, he's jolly, like, in, in all the elves, too, Sam kind of describes him this way in the Fellowship of the Ring, is that they're so so young yet so old and so happy yet so ha- sad or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of history behind them, but generally mm-hmm. they're jolly folks. Yeah, generally they're really nice to hang out with. They're, they're, they're jolly. They'll feed you. That's a great thing that they do. Oh, God, there's that part in the Hobbit movies. Can we just talk about this for a second? What's that? When they're in Rivendell. I think it's in the extended version only. Okay. And they're eating all the elf food, and it sucks. Oh, yeah. They're like, what do elves eat? Like, twigs and berries and shit? And no. Just, like, green leafy things. Yeah, green like leafy things. No. and vegetarians. Elves fucking party. Like, they eat, and they party. Yeah, they made it seem like the dwarves were unsatisfied with the weird food there. That is not the that case. That is not the case. They were thoroughly satisfied. Thoroughly satisfied. It was a feast. I mean, Rivendell's, like, the coolest place to... to like, it's the last homely house, right? Mm-hmm. Elrond's house. Like, it's... Before the wild, you know? Mm-hmm. It's it's where you go to, like, rest up and get fat before the journey, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I just don't think they... I just don't think Elrond was uh, portrayed that way. I think he was, like, a stern kind of... Yeah, he was a little more stern and uptight than he should have been. Yeah, I think he should have... Like, he, did Hugo Weaving smile ever? I... Except at the end of The Return of the King? <laughs> like, he's just like, that's what that's... took... It took the downfall of Sauron to get this dude to smile. Is that what happened? That may that's the only that's the only smile I can think of. There may be some there may be a small smirk hidden in there somewhere, but not a full on Oh, grin. I remember a smirk when he says uh to Pippin and Mary when he's like, It's it seems you're inseparable even when you're summoned to a secret meeting and he's not or whatever. Yeah, he says yeah. it to Sam. He yeah. kinda smirks, yeah. Yeah, he gives a, he does give a little bit a little of a sideways smirk, smirk. But other than that, like <laughs> he's a happy dude. Like he, you know, mm-hmm. he lives in the most beautiful place in in Middle Earth. Like, right, right. Why would he be miserable and stern? So the next, oh my god, set these, of characters. Yeah, these ones, re- this one really irks me. Yeah, the Dunedain Rangers. The totally Dunedain. cut out. Totally, totally cut out. So the the Dunedain Rangers. Uh, People like shit on them, like in Bree and stuff. They're all like, "Oh, those fucking rangers!" Like nobody even knows. It's like a, it's like a secret. But the rangers are the line of the Dunedain, the kings of men in the north. Their line of Elros. So yeah, they um, they're super tall, 
and super rugged. And they live for a long time. They live for a really not long as long time. as the new Minorians used to, but still but, a but lot still, longer than men. Still pretty fucking long. Right. Yeah. Aragorn lives to be hella old. Yeah. I mean, by the time we meet him in this, he's already in his eighties. Yeah. yeah. He's eighty seven, isn't he? In this, he's eighty seven. Like at the time of like Helm's Deep. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. that's the year three thousand eighteen, I yeah. think. And he meets uh, he meets Arwen when he's like twenty. So by the oh, time, really? like, they've already been in love for, like, 60 years <laughs> by the time we see them. God damn, that's an extended engagement. Yeah, it's extended. But, yeah, the Dunedain Rangers. I mean, Aragorn's always rolling deep with the Dunedain Rangers. Right, yeah, there is kin, man. There's, it's like, like The Dunedain Rangers that show up at the at, at Dunharrow are basically like, he's basically like, my cousins and shit, man, yeah. come over here. The same way that... In it also, in the in the same way that like Gondor's is constantly seen as like the defense against the east mm-hmm. and the threats from over there, they're the defense nope. against the north. They're def- yeah. they're their defense against the north and all sorts of other weird, crazy creatures in yeah. the wild. And they just work in the background. They're just like always running around. And like, do, do the hobbits ever wonder? Like, they live in the midst of this old, broken kingdom. Like, right. And they live in utter peace. And you know, like, how who do you think is there's a shitload of orcs up in the Grey Mountains and in the mm-hmm. Misty Mountains just waiting to tear a new asshole to any hobbit. Right. You know? Like, and That'd be a pretty easy target for It'd them. be a pretty easy target. They're not fighters, so... Um, what's keeping them safe? What's keeping them safe? The Dunedain Rangers are keeping them safe. They're the ones keeping that general region safe. Yeah, and Aragorn's the, what they call the chieftain of the the um, the Dunedain, which is essentially the, the king of Arnor. Right, he's the king of Arnor, the northern mm-hmm. kingdom, which by default makes him king of the southern kingdom because the line of southern kings is ended. Right, the line of Anarion ended, which we talked about in the last episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the Dunedain Rangers are are uh, key in the taking of the pass of the dead. Yep. And it makes way more sense as to why the king of the dead would help Aragorn, if he rolled deep with like 30 fucking Dunedain. Right. These are all Northern Kingdom guys. Yeah. He shows, like, I am the heir. Look at me. Look, look the, at them. The this blood is of, us. yeah, the blood of Numenor is not spent, is what he's saying. Like, mm-hmm. we're here and we're, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just him and Gimli and Legolas. Legolas. It was him, Gimli, Legolas, the sons of Elrond, and, and an like entire, 30 Dunedain. Yeah, yeah. Like a troop of Dunedain. <laughs> like, this is a big deal. Yeah. And yeah, they totally got they got shot. And like uh, they also fight. Uh, they take over with the army of the dead. They help the in the battle of the corsairs. They take oh, over yeah, the, yeah. the ships. Yeah, they're 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 big help in the final fights. Yeah, and then they, yeah they show up at Pelennor Field again. So yeah, the Dunedain Rangers. Some of my favorite groups of people. If I could be any race, I said this on the Facebook page a couple weeks ago. Dunedain Rangers. Any race, would that would be pretty cool. You'd get to adventure Dunedain around Rangers. pretty much everywhere and see everything. Mm-hmm. And you're pretty much a survivalist. So. Yeah, and you like live a real long time yeah. too. You still get whatever the gift to men is when they die, but yeah. you still live a long time. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. All right, so Dunedain Rangers shafted. shafted. Let's move on. Next character, another big one. Another, another big one. This one, tie, he's one of these characters that ties in all three ages as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our good friend, Glorfindel. Glorfindel. Glorfindel or Glorfindel? However you want to say it. I've heard people say both. I've seen it. I've I heard say it. Glorfindel. Yeah. The audiobook says Glorfindel. Glorfindel. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. noticed that. Yeah. So, we lo- yeah. We love our audiobooks. We love our audiobooks. <laughs> um, so, he is uh, originally from, uh, from, from Gondolin. He's uh, of, of the House of the Golden Flower. And, uh, well, actually, and, excuse me, he's actually from Valinor. He crosses with uh, Fingolfin's people yep. in the yeah. Helcorax. So way back in the first age, back when the Noldor first have their fissure from the Valar and the rest of the elves, and they leave to go back to Middle-earth, he's one of them folks. He's, he's been around for a long time. And so, yeah, so uh, Turgon is um, Fingolfin's son, so he, he hooks up with those people, and they found Gondolin, and he lives there. And he's uh, the leader of the House of the Golden Flower, which is one of the, what are they, 12 houses? 11 houses? I'm not, I'm I can't not sure. Remember. There, were, there were over 10 houses. Yeah, I think it's 11. I want to say it's 11. There's a bunch of different houses in the, in the of fall. Gondolin. Of Gondolin, yeah. And um, he's one of the leaders of mm-hmm. the House of the Golden Flower. Yeah, so he's a big leader in that fight in the mm-hmm. fall of Gondolin, which was one hell one hell of a fight. fight cuz it was just a complete slaughter utterly. Mm-hmm. And Glorfindel we we've actually talked about him uh in the uh in the fall of the Gondolin episode that we did. We uh, yeah. we talked about him. He holds off 
uh, a Balrog. Mm-hmm. So uh, Tuor and Idril can escape with a bunch of refugees. Was that on the mountain pass? Yeah, it's in the mountain pass, yeah. yeah. There was like this single file mountain pass that mm-hmm. they were using to escape the city because the city is encircled by mountains. Yeah. And as they're trying to escape this path, there's a fucking Balrog that cuts them off. Mm-hmm. And he basically, uh, Glorfindel, basically sacrifices himself yeah. and takes it over takes the edge. Takes it over the edge. And then Thorindor, our good buddy, bears up the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does die there, and he's one of the only elves that we know of that gets reincarnated, right? Yeah, yeah, I know he is. Yeah, he's the only one. So the Valar, uh, because of his acts of heroism, um, they sent him back to Middle Earth as a as an emissary to kind of keep, kind of do the same thing that the Astari were doing. Yeah, the, keep an eye on keep things. an eye on things, <clears throat> and, and they endowed him with a bunch of extra powers. So which is why when you see him in the Council of Elrond and at the Fords of River Bruinen, he is like glowing like radiating fucking light mm-hmm. and <clears throat> he, that's the powers that are endowed to him by the valar he had also previously seen the light of the trees on top of that so on he's top real of that, yeah so he's he's real he's radiant stacked. yeah he's got a lot of modifiers working for him and he uh, he saved frodo at the uh, the fords of bruinen when the nazgul were coming down on him yeah he was he was a big uh, factor in saving frodo from the nazgul on mm-hmm. their way to um rivendell yeah and uh, that was actually not the first time he ran in with the Witch King. A little bit of backstory on Glorfindel. Yeah, because he, he, he's old. Yeah, he's very old. And he um, he helped fight in the against Angmar in, um, in the, in the early Third Age yeah, in the north. And uh, he was actually the one. I just found this out the other day, man. It's so cool. He was the one, Glorfindel, because Glorfindel is one of my favorite characters. He was the one that made the prophecy that no living man could kill the Witch King. That was him. That was him. Yeah, he made that prophecy. And who fulfills that prophecy? Eowyn. A woman. A woman. So he was right. He was totally right. He was totally right. Called it. Called it. So yeah, he's shafted. He's cut out. Never mentioned by name. Glorfindel. He- shafted. Shafted. Moving on to our next character we got, Haldir. Haldir's the guard of the northern borders of Lorien. Um, they originally meet the fellowship as they leave Moria, as they're leaving Moria, being pursued by orcs. He's got his two brothers with him, Rumil and Orofin. They don't talk much to the uh, fellowship because they don't speak the common tongue all that well. But uh, uh, Haldir does. And he gives them uh, shelter in the trees and the orcs pass underneath them. And then he later takes them to see Galadriel and Celeborn. And he's in the movie. That's like, that's uh, he appears in the Fellowship of the Ring, but for some reason, they decided to add a bunch of elves to Helm's Deep. So the reason why he's on this list is because he shows up at Helm's Deep. Yeah, it's not necessarily that he was cut, but that they threw him in in some place where he totally didn't even belong. He didn't even belong, and then they killed him because he dies. Yeah. Yeah, Helder's not killed in the no. <laughs> in the books. No, he no. doesn't die. <laughs> no. And they totally brought him and then they, they killed him off. And everyone's just like everyone's like, Man, it was so sad when Helder died at Helm's Deep, and I was like, that should never happen. He was not even there and he doesn't <laughs> die in general. Yeah. It would be really sad if Haldir died. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, th- that brings us to another uh Lothlorian elf. Kelleborn. Kelleborn. So he's born in Doriath in the first age. He married uh, Galadriel, who's a Noldor, mm-hmm. and he's actually Sindar. He he met her through uh, Melian the Maya, who is king, a wife of King Thingol, because um, Melian and Galadriel hung out quite a bit, which is why Galadriel knows a lot of magic and shit. Yeah, she hung out with a fucking Maya a lot. Yeah, Celeborn said to be the not, on, not only that, but like an outwardly claim to be Maiar. Like, a lot of the times the Maiar... Oh, are, like, on the down low? Yeah, they're kind yeah. of on the down low, like Gandalf no, and she's Sauron. Like they were not, they were like, most of the time Maiar are not that outgoing about, like, I'm a fucking Maiar. Yeah, but Melian's like, hey, I'm Melian the Maya. I'm What's Melian up? the Maya. Let me give you a little bit of prophecy or some random insight wisdom that would be super useful if you'd listen to it and, like, nobody yeah, does. and nobody does. And Melian's great. We're gonna talk about her in our uh, Women in Tolkien episode. Oh, it's gonna be great, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so Celeborn is said to be the grandson of Elmo, who is the brother of Thingol, so he's related mm-hmm. to Thingol. And the reason we put Celeborn on this list is because he barely even speaks. Yeah, he basically <laughs> says, welcome, and where is Gandalf, and that's about it. But I much desire to speak with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, 
yeah, and all, most of the lines he has are in the extended edition. Right. Um, one of the cool scenes he has in the extended edition is where he talks to Aragorn and gives him that sweet hunting knife that's not in the book. You know, that like curved. Oh, the one that he throws at, at Lurtz, who's not in the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot yep. of not in the book stuff. But yeah. So yeah, Kelleborn shafted. Shafted, and our next one. Orc characters. Orc characters. And we just wanted to throw that out as a general category because there were so many characters of orcs there's in the a book st- that had specific <laughs> names and roles. There's a stupid amount of orc characters <laughs> that have names in the book. And it's it's really funny because they're all just kind of the same character. They're just all like, and they're stupid. and, uh, and you they, know. they all have crazy names. It's yeah, super they're funny. all dumb but they're, names. They're all shafted yeah. in the movies. They, none of them get any kind of name or recognition or anything mm-hmm. unless it's for something short and stupid that they did. Yeah. Uh, was it a couple of them. Grishnak is in the movie. Grishnak is uh, that one that gets stomped to death by a tree beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Grishnak. Uh, who else is Shagrat is in the book? Is, or in the Shagrat. Movie, is Shagrat and... Uh, oh. I can't remember the other one. There are a couple that are more or less there. But they never they really mention their names or anything. They don't really do they? tell you who they are. And they don't have many lines. What they're doing. Or... So, yeah. Peter Jackson is a racist. And he Against cut out all orcs. the orc characters. We personally support the orc kind. Yeah, we support the orc community. All right, moving on. With, um, that, with that disclaimer, um, <laughs> our, our, our next character. Um, Elfhelm. We got Elfhelm, who is the... He's the Marshal of the East Mark of Rohan. Yeah, yeah, moving into some of the Rohirrim. Yeah, we're moving into the Two Towers now, guys, with some of the Rohirrim. Uh, he's the Marshal of the East Mark of uh, Rohan. He's one of King Thingol's... Or, excuse me, look at that. Oh, Not man. Not Thingol. Whoa. No, which is funny because Theoden, who I meant to say, his father's name is Thangol, uh? which is even further confusing. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we're talking about... Elves from the first age yeah. compared to men of the third age, <laughs> not related in any way. So anyway, Elfhelm is one of Theoden's most trusted commanders. Um, he fights at the Battle of the Fords of Isen, where Theodred, who is the son of um, Theoden, dies. Mm-hmm. Gets killed. Gets killed. I mean, he mortally dies wounded. Like, mortally wounded, yeah. Um, and yeah, he uh, Elfhelm also commands um, a bunch of troops at the Pelennor Fields. And, yeah, uh, another big fighter. Yeah, another big fighter. And uh, two of which under his command are Mary and Dernhelm, who turns out to be Eowyn. Dernhelm. Dernhelm. <laughs> and uh, so Elfhelm is actually, he is the one that he stays in charge. He stays back when the host of the West goes to the Black Gate. He stays in uh, Minas Tirith and stays in charge of the Rohirrim station there. Oh, kind of keeping things under kind control. Of keeping things under control. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And he's completely cut out of the movie. Not even mentioned. Not even mentioned by name. Doesn't even get like a background no. character, nothing. Just no. he's gone. He's gone. Shafted. 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 Our next one is also from Rohan. He's the Marshal of the Westmark. <laughs> um, his name's Erkenbrand. Um, and Erkenbrand's actually an older guy. Um, he had, at the time of the War of the Ring, he had retired from, uh, from military, from fighting, from killing. And uh, he uh, returned from retirement after Theodrin, uh, Th- Theodrin falls at the Fords of Aizen. So he basically steps, kind of like Theoden, because remember, Theoden's all old and under the spell of uh, Saruman. Yeah, yeah. But the last year of his life, he steps the fuck up and he does a bunch of cool shit. And mm. that's kind of what Erkenbrand does, too. But... um. Urgenbrand was the leader of the the host that uh, Gandalf brought to Helm's Deep uh, to turn the tide of the battle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which they just kind of... Um, the Riders of the Mark that he... Yeah. They kind of replaced him with Aylmer in the movie. Cause, yeah. Because Aylmer in the book fights in Helm's Deep, and he becomes really good friends with Aragorn there because mm-hmm. they, they fight together. Uh, but in the movie, he's off uh, in the Westfold or something. Yeah, in the movie, they make it seem like he's the one that got sent away. Mm-hmm. When that wasn't the case. Yeah, that really wasn't the case. Yeah, it's Urkenbrand. Urkenbrand brings the ball. And Gandalf shows up with Urkenbrand and, yay, it's Gandalf and Urkenbrand. I knew they'd come. Huzzah. Urkenbrand. Shafted. Shafted. Replaced by Aomer. <laughs> uh, next, another Rohirrim character. I actually just mentioned he or she earlier. He or she. Good old Dernhelm, a.k.a. Eowyn's alter ego. 
Yeah. Uh, so one of the things, so she, yeah, she befriends Mary, and she's like, "Hey, you can ride with me," because Theoden's all like, "You know, you're too small to ride. My, none of my riders can bear you." Mm-hmm. Um, and Dernhelm's like, "I'm a small guy," and everyone's like, "Yeah, that Dernhelm's a real small, scrappy dude." <laughs> they <don't, laughs> and so yeah, he picks up Mary, and he's like, "Yeah, you can ride with me, no problem." And he actually says to Mary at one point, he's like, "Do I?" And Mary says to him, "Like, do I know you?" And he's like, or, or Mary says, like, I don't know you. And he's like, do you not? Oh, that's weird. Like, cause okay. you, you totally know who I am. But, but uh, yeah, so he, the cool thing, of, so the Dernhelm alter ego character is completely shafted from the movies. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's a great, it's a better storyline than they did in the movie. Yeah. Because we don't actually know that Dernhelm is Eowyn. Until Until last he's second. about to kill the fucking Witch King. Yeah, it's a huge that makes that scene so much, so more, much more intense. Effective. Because up until this point, we're like, oh no, like Mary's good little friend that he he's made. Yeah, scrappy little dude. Scrappy little dude's about to get <laughs> killed now too. And then all of a sudden, as she's takes off as he's helmet. about to stab the Witch King in the face, he takes off his helmet and this gold flowy hair falls down. And you see it's fucking Eowyn. You look upon a woman. And then, and then just she stabs him in the stabs face. Stabs him in the, what face a Nazgul has. In the space where his face should be. Where it should be. And so, yeah, she's shafted because, uh, or, or excuse me, Al- Dernhelm alter ego is shafted because it's completely caught out of the movie and we know it's Eowyn the whole time. Yeah, and in the movie, as soon as they leave and he slash she picks up Mary, Mary she's like, ride with me. And he's like, yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. Yeah, we've seen that. We've got damn. How many times have you seen that movie? We're not going to get into it. It's okay. <laughs> People at home are just like, how many fucking times? We've literally had nights where we hang out and we just we, recite yeah. lines back and forth. And we either have one person name who and when it was or we'll just continue the scene. Fair. It's it's our life. It's ridiculous. It's okay. Huge, huge nerd alert. <laughs> Dernhelm. Dernhelm. Shafted. Shafted. So uh, the next one here, this is a... This I is love a, this one. This Yeah, this is one of my favorite little side characters. Han Buri Han, which is spelled with a G, apparently. G-H-A-N, but Buri, it, G-H-A-N. Yeah, it's Han Buri Han. And he's the leader of a group of people called the Druidane, and they live in the, the Druidane forest. Yeah, they were like wild men yeah. nearby. And uh, they essentially... So, like, those... They aren't super cool with the Rohirrim. But um, they actually, Han Buri Han, like, approaches the Rohirrim as they're on their way to Minas Tirith, and he's like... Yeah, so somewhere, this is technically being the Return of the King, right? This is, yeah. As the Rohirrim are riding towards the Battle of Pelennor Fields to save Minas Tirith from the from the battle, they're having trouble getting there, and that's when they meet Han Buri Han. And I think they're about to walk into an ambush, too. Yeah. Which is what the thing He was. warns them. Yeah. They're about to walk into a huge ambush, and he says, like, there's this secret little way called... Uh, What's it called? Stone Wayne Valley. A secret little pass through Stone Wayne Valley. And um, so he basically makes a deal with Theoden. And he's like, yeah, we'll help you because we really hate orcs. Like, we don't like you guys that much, but we hate orcs even worse. And we're going to help you defeat the orcs. And all we want in return is for you to fucking leave us alone. That's all we want. And what's funny is uh, Theoden holds up his end of the bargain and uh, they actually never see any of the Druidan again. They're never reported seen after that. So they just kind of just do their own thing, man. They just go back in the forest. And uh, Han Buri Han is their, is their leader. And Han Buri Han is shafted because he's nowhere to be seen or heard in the movies. He has some really fun lines, too. Yeah. Sure. Swords of shiny iron. That's what I like. He's, he's, he's like, you kill them with swords of shiny iron. <laughs> All right. So Han Buri Han. Shafted. Shafted. Moving on next, we got our friend Shadowfax and the Mayros. Is it Miros? Miros. I don't really know how to pronounce that word. Mieros, I bet, is how you say it. But they are like horse lords among horses. Right. And they are, what we say, Joel, high horses. <laughs> <laughs> one, one might say that these are the high horses. <laughs> Kind of like the Noldor or the High Elves. High Elves, these are high horses. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of similar. They have longer lifespans than mm-hmm. regular horses. They're, they're strong smarter, and stronger, they're smart. faster. Yeah. And uh, yeah, some people say they can even speak from time to time. Which oh, really? Is, yeah. 
Their stamina bars are very high. Yeah, unlimited stamina bar. It's like when you get that undead horse and undead red redemption. Just, you just can beat it. it. Just goes forever. Or when you get like Shadow Mirror. Yeah, in, in Skyrim? Skyrim. Hell yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, these so the Mieras, including uh, Shadowfax, who is uh, I guess default Gandalf's horse, but he technically belongs to Theoden. Technically, he's the Lord of the Miras. Yeah, he's the Lord of the Miras. And, so uh, he's like high even among the high horses. Yeah. And uh, Theoden's horse, Snowmane, is also one of these Mieras. And uh, they're shafted. They're mentioned one time. Legolas mentions them. Yeah, sort of briefly. Yeah. Um, but it's also, the thing that bothers me is that it's not, they don't go into the whole, like, it took Gandalf, like, a week to be able to ride him. Like it was a couple he, days. Or a couple days, yeah. It was a couple days, yeah. He pursued him for a couple days before he more or less just befriended and came to a mutual agreement. Like, yeah, we're, we're cool here. We're going to work together, so. And uh, they're actually the descendants of horses brought to Middle-earth by Orome. Yeah, which Orome's horses. Orome's horses, which is named, uh, what's his horse's name? It's like Nahar or something like that. I can't say I remember but his horse's name. Yeah, it's it's famous horse. Uh so the Mieras and Shadowfax? Shafted. Totally shafted. Oh, my God. This one really bothers me, this next one. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're talking about Baragond. And anybody that's read the books is going to know exactly who this is. Baragond is a great character in The Return of the King. Mm. When Gandalf and Pippin uh, ride to Minas Tirith on their own, this is right before the Battle of Pelennor Fields, Gandalf has a lot of stuff that he's got to do, and he can't just bring Pepin along with him all the time. So he kind of entrusts Pepin to one of the guardsmen, Baragond. Baragond. He, yeah, he's the leader of the Tower Guard in Minas Tirith. It's like his job to guard the Citadel. And he's a real great guy. Yeah, he's real friendly. He, um, he, he greets Pepin right away, and he's like, you know, hey, I've never seen anybody like you before. Let's be friends. And he's a real stand-up guy. And yeah, he, real stand-up he helps guy. out in multiple ways. Yeah. And he's got two kids, Borlas and Bergil. We actually, <clears throat> Bergil, so this is kind of a, a two-part because Bergil is also a shafted character. Um, Bergil's the one that shows Pepin around uh, Minas Tirith. And yeah, there's a there's a while where even Baragon has things he has to do. <laughs> so he can't. Literally, everybody's too busy for Pippin. That's <laughs> so so Baragon even like pawns him off on, pawns Pepin off on, on his son, Bergil. And they actually have a grand old time because technically they're sort of around the same they're age. They're sort of around the same age for, yeah, their, for their race. Because he's like, uh, B- uh, Bergil's like uh, 12, 13. Yeah, he's so, like in his like teens. Yeah. And, and Pippin's 27, which yeah, is like. And for hobbits, they call it their tweens. The tweens, yeah. Because hobbits, they live relatively long, but it, they, yeah. they become age a little bit later. And if people are always wondering, like, why is Pippin always doing such stupid shit and like fool? Well, he's just a fool. Right. That's he's because he's like be 16 child. years old. Yeah, yeah, he's a fucking teenager. Leave him alone. <laughs> Um, yeah, he also helps uh, after the Battle of Minas Tirith slash Pelennor Fields. He's an errand runner, and he helps hmm. uh, bring people up to the Houses of Healing. He helps bring Mary up there. Nice. Yeah. And uh, the the main thing that he does is when uh, Denethor is ready to burn Faramir alive. So we're talking about Baragund now, not his son. Yes, I'm sorry. We're talking about Baragund. So what Baragund does, um, one of the things that he does is he is... Uh, he abandons his post during the battle. Yeah, he's very loyal to Faramir. Yeah, he loves Faramir. And uh, he, so Pippin, I think, at one point says something like, you know, you you got the choice to, like, man your battle post or whatever, but he's about to fucking burn Faramir alive, and I'm going yeah. to get Gandalf to help. Because Pippin was desperately, as soon as Pippin found out what was happening mm-hmm. with uh, Denethor trying to burn him and Faramir alive, he was desperately trying to find somebody to help him because he's just a hobbit. He can't even physically yeah. stop him if so he, he to. Yeah, first stop, he goes to Baragond, and Baragond's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I've he's got like, orders. he's the lord, and yeah. I, I'm supposed to stand here and stand guard, and he's like, well, at this point, like, you've got a choice between saving Faramir or... Or following orders. Or following orders, like... And, like, that's where it came down, because Baragund, like, anybody in that situation, any honorable person in that situation would be like, fuck orders. Right. You know? So he actually kills, like, several members of, of the, of the, uh, the, the guard. Tower guard. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he literally he kills blood. members of his own guard to try to save Faramir. Yeah. And stop Denethor. Which is technically treason. And, uh... And they actually, uh... We'll get into that a little bit later, mm. uh, in a second here. But uh, also, so after the battle, he also marches off to the Black Gate, and he serves under Prince Imrahil. Um, but at the end of uh, when everyone's getting their comeuppance, and uh, Aragorn is, like, acknowledging everybody for their deeds, 
he there's a cool little moment in the book where he's like, and Baragund, I banish you from Minas Tirith. And they're like, oh no. And he's like, I'm not going to kill you because that's normally the penalty, but I banish you from Minas Tirith. But you get to go serve Faramir in Ithilien, which is a super dope place now. And like he becomes like leader of uh, Faramir's armies, essentially, in Ithilien. So... It's a good lateral and then major promotion. Yeah, major promotion. Yeah, little lateral shift and then major promotion. And gets transferred and promoted. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, Baragund is uh, completely cut out of the movie. He's a great character to have, and he yeah, yeah he was totally taken out. And this is one I don't honestly think it would have been that hard for them to keep in. No, he would have he would have made a lot of sense to have him in mm-hmm. Minas Tirith. He would have connected some dots. Yeah. And I feel like they could have got a lot of cool exposition dialogue from him too. Oh yeah, absolutely. From a you know screenwriter's perspective. Um, so Baragund. Baragund shafted. Shafted. And uh, we just mentioned this guy. Actually, this guy's super freaking shafted. Yeah, he's a he's a big deal. Also in Minas Tirith in the Battle of Pelennor Fields. And that's Prince Emra. Im, uh, excuse me, Imrahil. Prince Imrahil. He's from a whole nother like neighboring kingdom that helps them out. Well, it's it's like totally a, not. It's, it's like a princedom in southern Gondor. Is it? It's, okay. it's on the coast. It's like real nice down there, and like everyone's tan, and like they just have a great time. But he's they're like one of the major friends of Gondor. Yeah, well, I mean, they're technically part of Gondor. He's a prince of Gondor. So like this, like uh, Imrahil's Dunedain of the south, essentially. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's of the line of princes. He brings troops, and he brings a lot of stuff for yeah, the, the Battle Swan of Pelennor Fields. The Swan Knights, son. They're like an elite group of fighters um, that help yeah, Minas Tirith. Super badass. Super yeah, badass. so he's he's a really big deal. And he actually takes over governing Minas Tirith for a short amount of time. For yeah, a short amount of time. Before. After after Denethor has his psychoatic breakdown and then dies. Somebody has to Well, because at that point, uh Faramir would have become the steward, but Faramir was in sick in the hospital. Yeah, he was unconscious. So somebody had to take over rule of the city for a while, especially in the middle of this battle that mm-hmm. they're having. So technically he becomes steward for a little bit. Yeah, so Gandalf more or less appoints Emerhill as steward of the city until Aragorn comes and enters and takes it. Mm-hmm. And he's actually, uh, Emerhill's the first of the Gondorian, like, uh, upper society, I guess you could say, that uh, officially recognizes Aragorn as king. Mm-hmm. And to the point where, like, when they get to Minas Tirith, he's like, you should wait out here because I'm going to go talk to Denethor. Because Denethor is his brother-in-law. or his uh, He's related to Denethor somehow. Imrahil? Imrahil is, yeah. I think it's his brother-in-law, but I'm not sure. I okay. think I think Faramir's mother is related to... Imrahil? To Imrahil somehow. Okay. Uh, something like that. But, um... Yeah, he's the first one, and he's like, you should stay out here. I'm going to go talk to Denethor, make sure he's cool with this, essentially. Because he knows and, he's probably not going to be cool with the king. And he totally wasn't. But. Yeah, he totally wasn't, but it turns out by that point he was dead, so fuck it, who cares? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, he's the first of the Gondorians to acknowledge the kingship of Aragorn. And after the War of the Ring, he stayed uh, for the coronation, uh, what do they call it, like the Fields of Cormallon, that chapter, I think they call it. But uh, he stays for the coronation of Aragorn and also rides to Edoras in Theoden's funeral procession. Yeah, so he's around for a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's around for for a long time after the war. Yeah, He's also good friends with Eowar by the end, too. Yeah, yeah, who's uh, the king at that point. Yeah, he becomes king of Rohan after Theoden dies. Yeah. And Imrahil's daughter, Lothiriel, is that how you... Oh. I, that's how I would say it. Lothiriel is how I'd say it. Yeah, and uh, she marries Eomer. And uh, becomes queen of Rohan, which is kind of cool. Oh, and then uh, which is kind of cool is that Eowyn and uh, Faramir get together. Everyone's she, getting connected. Yeah, and uh, Eowyn is technically she becomes she's a princess of both Gondor and Rohan, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and uh, Imrahil is never mentioned Neri at all. Do they? I mean, they never talk about uh, the knights, the Swan Knights. They I never, don't think they even mention it. it. In the movie, it doesn't even really make it out to be that Gondor has other cities. Yeah, it seemed like they were kind of all on their own. But there were some. There were some. Yeah, folks like that they come came in, in from in Southern Gondor, from uh, from Western Gondor, over by the White Mountains and shit. Like, yeah, there are mm-hmm. people coming in to help. Mm-hmm. And there were other cities, especially in Southern Gondor, Dol Amroth being the biggest one. Right. And yeah, so yeah, he's cut out and never even mentioned. Prince Imrahil. Prince Imrahil shafted. So the next few characters we've got for you are a little more obscure, but yeah. still important. Uh, so the next the next uh, category we wanted to touch on are just in general first age character references. Yeah, yeah, first age character first age heroes, uh 
stuff like that. Because there are there are a good handful of first age heroes and songs and references towards a lot of first age lore yeah. that got completely torn out of the, the mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, there's almost no hearkening back to the first age at all in the in the movies, which is sad. It right? is sad. At one point, I think we get a short song from Aragorn. Yeah, in the extended edition, he's singing part of the Lay of Lithian, yeah. But he doesn't even explain what that is. No, it was like... He just like, mentions that Baron? it was somebody who died long ago. He was ago. immortal. Who was Luthien? What happened to her? She died. They, like, that was all he said. Yeah. She died. Yeah, all he did, in the movie, Frodo's just like, who's the woman you sing of? He's like, oh, she died long ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the simplest explanation of the tale of Baron and Luthien I've ever heard. I have ever <laughs> heard. Holy <laughs> shit. There was a guy and a girl, and she died. Talk the about end. boiling it down. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah. Baron is only mentioned once. Uh, uh, Arendil is mentioned as the name of the star, but right. they, they're never like, yeah, that's Arendil up there with. The yeah, that's girl. Elrond's dad. Yeah, Elrond. You remember Elrond? Yeah, Elrond. You know him. That's he's, his daddy he's up his there. His dad up there. Yeah, he's his dad up there. Ask man. him about it. Ask him about it. Yeah, he's, he knows all about it. There's some real up there. <laughs> <laughs> Next time he passes through Rivendell one night, he's just like, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, oh, hey man, isn't that is that is that your dad? Is that your right dad up, up there, there, man? Flying flying through the sky. It's pretty sweet, bro. Yeah. You ever ride up in that ship, bro? Does he ever let you take the wheel? <laughs> That'd be cool. I just imagine Elrond like behind the wheel of Vingalot, just I'm so I ever wanted dad. Sailing away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be great. All right. Uh, so yeah. that sort of brings us a little closer to another category you wanted to go to, the Valar. The Valar, yeah. So first stage characters. Shafty. Shafty. And yeah, the Valar. The Valar. So, you know, uh, if you've listened to our show. You know, uh, I'm pretty good about about the Valar. Yeah, they're essentially the gods of uh, of Middle Earth. Yeah, of they're Argon. sort of sort of the gods of the physical world. Yeah, and like they're mentioned on a handful of occasions. Like I said, uh, Elbereth is mentioned uh, uh, quite a few times in the Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. and uh, they never leave that. Like, I mean, I suppose if you if Frodo just shouted Elbereth, they would probably have to explain it somehow. I mm-hmm. guess, which is probably what tripped him up. Maybe, but uh, I don't. I don't feel there's any reason to not mention the Valar. Yeah, and they they completely leave them out. I don't think they hint at them in any way, shape, or form. Even Gandalf doesn't talk about the Valar. No. Which they they might the, as well not even be part of exactly. the world there, yeah, and it wouldn't make well. a difference. And it wouldn't make any difference, because even Gandalf, who's a Meyer and works for them directly, right. never mentions them. They talk about going to Valinor on a couple of occasions yeah, and sailing exactly. into the West, but they never mention what the fuck is over there or yeah. who is or over there. Or who's over there. Yeah, they're just like, it's the Undying Lands. It's where the elves are from. But yeah, it's first of all they're not even from there. But I mean, listen to the Sundering of the Elves episode six, and you'll learn that. You'll yeah, that'll cover everything. <laughs> that'll cover everything you need to know about elves. Check it out. Check it out. Episode six. Uh, so the Valar. Shaft. Shaft, dude. And related to the Valar, our next category: the Eagles of one of the Valar, Eagles of Manway. Yeah, Eagles of Manway, man. We got uh, Gua here, who is a. Uh, they in, have names. Yeah, they have names. They and speak. Shit. They speak. Yeah, they have names and speak, guys, and they don't do they don't have either of those in the movie. Yeah, they're they're quite sentient. Yeah, they're they're quite yeah. Like when, uh, for example, when uh, Gandalf gets saved by one of the eagles from the top of Orthanc, mm-hmm. that eagle didn't come because Gandalf called him. That evil that eagle just kind of came by chance. Um, yeah. At one point, Radagast the Brown starts. Asking favors amongst all of his animal friends to keep an eye out for the Nazgul. Mm-hmm. And he asks Gwahir the Eagle. And Gwahir the Eagle's like, all right. And he's looking around and he's riding to Isengard, flying to Isengard to report a Nazgul sighting mm-hmm. when he just randomly sees Gandalf locked on top of the tower. And Gandalf's like, holy shit, am I glad to see you? I'm captive here. Take me away. And he's like, <laughs> I don't let people ride me. Basically, and he's like, "Well, how long are you willing to bear me? I, yeah. I need to get off here." Yeah. He's like, "I'll take you to Rohan." Yeah, and that's the thing. Like the eagles, because they work right for Manway, they they're not concerned with a lot. Like they do get involved when it's really necessary, but otherwise they're not concerned. Like because uh, Gandalf would have been like, "Hey, drive me to find Frodo." You drive know what me. I mean? Drive me. And he's just like, "No, I'll give you a lift, but uh, I'm gonna drop you down right outside." Yeah, he's <laughs> like, "I'm, I'm just not much for for, for giving rides." It's like your friend, your friend that won't give you a ride to the airport, <laughs> but he'll give you a ride to the bus stop to get to the airport. <laughs> Thanks, Guayu. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> the eagle. So oh, yeah, the eagles of Manway. Eagles of Manway, totally shafted. 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 And so this one, this this last one, guys, this is the last one here. And this is a controversial one. 
because a lot of people would disagree. But this was brought to my attention by a listener on the internet, on the interweb. And um, number th- 30 is Gandalf. Yeah. It's Gandalf. What? What? Yeah. And I think, so I think, first of all, let's say Ian McKellen is Gandalf. Yeah. Period. We just want to throw out that disclaimer. If we had to choose anyone to play Gandalf again, we would think the casting of Ian McKellen was perfect. It's fucking perfect. He, he, he murders it. And honestly, the fact that out of three movies, he wasn't nominated for Best Supporting Actor at least once at the Academy Awards. That was outrageous. Whole, total horseshit. Him and Bernard Hill had it coming. Like him and Theo did should have been nominated for, oh, for yeah. the two towers. Oh yeah. Oh, Bernard Hill did such an yeah. amazing job. Yeah, he's amazing. I, I really feel bad for him because he did a hell of a job as Theo. Yeah, he deserved a. So I don't know if you guys know about this because uh, uh, we're kind of film nerds too. But like, uh, uh, the Return of the King holds a record for most Academy Awards. It's tied, but it was the only one to ever win that many without ever being nominated for a single acting category. And it definitely deserved some. Yeah. I mean, I, I can understand... Kate Blanchett as Galadriel? Come on. I can understand it not sweeping all the categories. That'd be kind of unfair to all the other movies of the year right. that year. But, but come um, on. That, it, that, that must have sucked, though, because there was so much great acting in those movies. Yeah, yeah and there was some shitty acting, too. Let's not be... Oh, sure, sure. sure. It's Orlando true. Orlando Bloom. Definitely. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But there, there were some real solid, solid roles yeah, in there. Like no, some, some people did some real good job. Yeah, yeah. Too. No, so, totally can't complain. So this is, yeah, this is a listener grievance. I'm doing it on behalf of him, essentially. Gandalf. So well, I mean, we we still. Well, I do kind of agree with him too. Yeah, yeah I I agree in a sense. I just I feel really weird about having Gandalf on this list. Right, because I mean, we approve of the casting. Yeah, and like everything. Yeah, he's my Gandalf. He will always be my. Gandalf. But the grievance, we haven't even gotten to the grievance yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The grievance is that Gandalf is not powerful is not powerful enough magically. He does a lot more magical stuff. In, He's in doing the book. a lot more magic. It's in the not book. like background magic either. It's straight up like flashes, fires, right. bangs, killing people, fucking like. He Scaring almost like teleports wards, too. Yeah. Like he's always in different places and like yeah, you, he, he gets places <laughs> real quick, <laughs> real quick, super like, efficient. Nobody knows how. And it's like, and when they're running from the Balrog and Moria, like Gandalf's doing like sealing spells on the door, and then the, yeah. the Balrog's busting through him with his magic because he's my R too. And they're having this like magic fucking battle. And that was another thing: the Balrog battle should have been more than just swords and whips. Yeah, it should have been fucking magic. Should have been all that shit. And it it really wasn't like. Gandalf in the movie he kills him by uh, summoning a lightning bolt and then stabbing him through the heart. Yeah, something which is weird. something like that. Um, but yeah, there was no, there's there not was a whole lot, lot of magic, magic to speak of. Yeah, when they were bad, they were having a magic battle at that, that, that point with the door that you mentioned. Like Gandalf was trying to put uh, a spell of sealing on the door, and all of a sudden he felt something else counteracting his spell on the other side, and the door started to swing open. And th- that's how powerful the Belrog's magic was. And mm-hmm. so Gandalf was like, I had to use a spell of command on the door to try to get it to close and it was too much from either side and the door exploded and yeah the, that's right I totally and the, forgot about the, that. the whole hallway caved in there that's mm-hmm. what stopped the orcs as they tried to get to the bridge he's like yeah the, everything exploded it was too much like spell and counter spell and it destroyed the door yeah yeah and so, yeah so that's like in uh so the main thing that this viewer took or this listener took uh um, issue with was the scene in the extended Return of the King, where is one of my favorite scenes, and we read this for an excerpt. What was the last mm-hmm. episode, right? Uh, in the Gandalf episode. Yeah, well, it was an excerpt. The line was properly taken from the Witch King. Right. Yeah. They this use is my they hour. use it differently yeah. in the movie. They use it differently in the movie. And the one thing that would have been a really really cool scene if they wouldn't have done one thing. Hmm. And that was break Gandalf's staff. Yeah, that was a bit much. Yeah, that was a bit much. And because, like, like a like our our, our listener was saying, um, you, so you're 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 gonna tell me that Gandalf the Gray, who is less less powerful than Gandalf the White, has enough power to kill a Balrog in single combat, but a wraith, even though it's the Witch King, has enough power to break his staff and overpower him magically. Yeah, that no, doesn't that make any goddamn he's sense. He's a Maiar. He's a Maiar. And even as Gandalf the Grey, he was able to take down another Maiar. Another Maiar, Maiar more powerful Maiar too. Yeah. Like, and then when it comes down to Gandalf the White, a much more powerful now Maiar sent back against 
what we're assuming a black Numenorian got into some fucking yeah. sorcery or something. Yeah, That's it's, it's the, basically a ghost. It's an angry fucking ghost. <laughs> like it's really like, talking down the witch king. Yeah, right now, it, find us witch king. Email us at keep on talking podcast at gmail. Yeah, throw, throw your shade at us, at us witch huh? king. But I mean, against Gandalf the White, I mean a Maiar come back, super powerful. Yeah, no, that's not that's not no. much of a contest. Yeah. I I really agree with with our listener. He definitely would. I don't think the and witch king would have the power to do that. No, he definitely wouldn't. And if I know Not anything if I know anything about movies, it's that they wanted to get rid of the staff because they were too lazy to make all the scenes at the Black Gate Gandalf dual wielding. <laughs> Cuz Gandalf dual wielding is obviously much harder to choreograph mm-hmm. than it would be just the sword. There were a couple badass scenes in uh, Minas Tirith where we got to see oh, the Ian McKellen yeah. doing some dual wielding. That was cool. Yeah, our friend Thomas Bailey, who I just watched it with for the first time, uh, who, who does our video stuff, he'd never seen The Return of the King, so I sat him down one day, or he'd never seen any of The Lord of the Rings, so I recently abused him and made him watch all the extended editions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was like, that part was... Uh, it was, it was Gandalf dual wield? Yeah, he was He was so ecstatic about watching Gandalf dual wield. It was super wield. badass. Yeah. So Gandalf, Gandalf, in some ways... In some ways, in a few different ways... Was was shafted. Was shafted. 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 A soft shafted. A soft. Yeah, we'll give him a soft shafted. But that's that's the entirety of the list. Yeah, that's a, that's who we came up with, guys. Hit us up if you think we missed anybody, or if you disagree with, something or if you we disagree said. with something we said, um, or you think we're just stupid and you wish we'd die. Whatever. Please let us know. We'd love to get <laughs> any kind of feedback. Just throw it at us. Come on. We can take it. <laughs> we can take it. We love hearing um, from you guys. It, yeah, it helps we, us. We literally like me and uh, me and Dole, Like uh, we kind of like f- fight over who gets to respond to people first. Sometimes we're like, I'll be like, oh shit! Uh, hopefully Joel doesn't see this. I'm gonna respond to this cat first. Yeah, there's a friend of ours who uh, recently started listening, and and she started sending us some of her notes, and she's like, you know what? I'll just I'll shorten these up a little bit, and I'll 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 send you know I'll I'll send them in more chunks, you know, so you're not just getting all these notes all the time and questions. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, please. Do it. Please keep on sending them. We love this. This is yeah. why we do this. Exactly. And like, yeah, the, the whole goal of this podcast. We want to talk to you. Is to just, yeah, this is just to make more nerd friends and make more nerds, essentially. Is uh, if I have one goal before I die is to make more nerds, right? Right. That's that's right. So in yeah. conclusion. Yeah, and we, yeah, we just want to, before we sign off, we just want to say, because we've been talking, we've been lovingly talking shit about the movies for the past two episodes now. Mm-hmm. But we want to say that we do love the movies. Yeah, and, we want to reiterate, please, unlike the Hobbit trilogy. Which we, is trash and is terrible. <laughs> we do love the Lord of the Rings We do movies. love the Lord of the Rings. So don't come at us with this, how do you guys not like the Lord of the Rings? Oh, we love them so we much. We love them so much. And we just wanted to point out some of the fun differences between yeah. the books and the movie. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're just kind of book elitist assholes. That's, yeah, I mean, that's what it comes long, down to. That's what it comes down to. Um, yeah. If you... <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so on a, on that note too if you like the hobbit movies and you think they're awesome come at us because i'm sure we'd love to have a conversation with you I genuinely will, i will stay up all night talking to you about why the hobbit movies suck until you agree with me <laughs> all right guys well this is this has been really fun i enjoyed this episode quite a bit this has been good um make sure you tune in next time we're going to start talking about something that's been We've been we've been leading up to since last season the Council of Elrond. We're really yeah, going to yeah. dig into this, guys. It's really going to get great. into it. It's it's going to and like we uh, we talked about in 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 past episodes. Uh, there's certain things in Tolkien that for Tolkien nerds is porn, and yeah, the Council chapter, of Elrond is porn of fucking graphic. Yeah, you guys. this chapter is great. They dig into a lot of stuff. You learn everything. It connects so many dots. You've got so many great oh. characters and old storylines coming back, coming and back and from from relating just, things. Oh. And, God, the Council yeah. of Elrond's awesome. And Tune I remember in. when I when I read the book for the first time, I hated that chapter. I thought it was the most boring shit. And I just I was like, I need to get through this so I can get to the rest of the book. And then the second time I read the book when I was in uh when I was just graduated high school, I was like, Oh my God, this is the best. It's thing. amazing. I had to read through it extra slow and I went through it the second time. Yeah. It's on the same vein as uh um the song uh Wreck of the Emma Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. I heard that when I was a kid, and I laughed at it. I was like, this song is goofy. And now, now that I like singer-songwriters, I listen to it, and I'm like, wow, Gordon Lightfoot's the greatest, <laughs> one of the greatest singer-songwriters ever. But yeah, you just you don't have appreciation for it, is what I'm saying. 
you got to be in the right mindset to appreciate it. Right and on. Yeah, and right on. So that's uh, that's all we got for you guys. Uh, make sure you follow us uh, on social media. And uh, as always, uh, keep on talking. Keep on talking. Aure in Tuluba.